Hello everybody, welcome to the Red Men TV. My name is Ben Kelly. This is the Liverpool Development Watch. Yes, season two of the Liverpool Development Watch. We're going to keep the show going. The show that brings you updates on the loanees and youth players associated with Liverpool Football Club. Today is going to be a bit of an introductory episode, introducing you to Liverpool's nine loanees for the 2018-19 season, giving you a, a sense of an idea of where they all are, what we're expecting from them this season. We're going to talk about a little bit of pre-season as well regarding to the loanees and the youth side. So let's just get straight into it. We currently have nine players out on loan as it stands and maybe one managerial loan but obviously the window is open for a few more days so there may be a couple more players going out. I'm going to run through them all, where they all are and what we can expect of them this season. We're going to start with Ryan Kent, Ovi Jaria and Steven Gerrard who are all at Rangers. Gerard has had a great pre-season at Rangers up in Scotland and the players have made solid starts to their loan during pre-season and they both made it onto the pitch on Sunday against Aberdeen in the opening one all draw. I think this is a make or break season for both of these players in regards to their Liverpool careers. Kent had two poor loan spells last season at Freiburg and at Bristol City and he wasn't at all in Klopp's pans this season. He went straight out on loan as pretty much as soon as we could have got him out there. As Jarby, on the other hand has looked bright but I've never been overly impressed with him in the Liverpool's first team He's always done well at the under-23s level and he's done well at Sunderland last season for what he could do given the team that he was in and he started well in Scotland but I think now it's all about proving that he can do it in a first team side on a consistent basis and that's why it's going to be a big season for him. Back to England then and we've got Harry Wilson at Derby County in the Championship. Now I said on the news show this week that I was very, very surprised to see Harry Wilson loaned out at all this season. He started the pre-season well under Jurgen Klopp. He looked, he was getting a few goals, he looked like he was going to stay and then suddenly he signed his contract and whew, he was out of here. It's interesting to see that we've loaned him to Derby where obviously Frank Lampard is the manager. I'm not sure if that's the best move just given just how little experience Lampard has in, in a managerial role and no doubt he's a very good player, he's got a very good football mine but is it the right time to be sending him out to a manager like Frank Lampard I'm not so sure about that but we'll wait and see how it goes. I'm expecting to have a good season in regards to goal scoring and he played 90 minutes on Friday night as Derby began their championship season away at Reading obviously a very late goal winning it for Frank Lampard's side there very good header as well and um, Wilson had a really good chance to score but, and to be honest it was an opportunity that I feel like he should have scored but the keeper made a very good save from close range and that was the sort of start of, of Wilson's career there. He wasn't in the game a lot in the first half because Derby were under the cost really for quite a lot of that opening period. Reading had a lot of the ball, they were creating a lot more chances. But slowly over the course of the game in the second half, Derby came into it more. Wilson had a bit more time on the ball to create some chances, got some good passes in. And as I say, he had that opportunity where he got himself into a good position. He just needed to be a bit more ruthless, I think, getting to the roof of the net in that case. And like Kent and Ajaria, again, I think this could be a make or break season for Harry Wilson. If he doesn't perform again consistently in the Championship, although he's already done it at Hull for me, I don't know what more he needs to prove in this division then he could have a problem staying at Liverpool permanently next summer I still think he's got a future here like I say I'm a little bit disappointed that he was loaned out in the first place but that's one of them things that we're going to have to wait and see whether or not Jurgen Klopp will opt to keep him next summer let's stay in the championship now and move to Ben Woodburn who's at Sheffield United he completed the loan last week and played 20 minutes on Saturday in their 2-1 opening game loss to Swansea he could be a crucial player for them next season as they aim to stay in this division for the second season running it'd be interesting to see how Sheffield do this season obviously they came up and they were a bit of a surprise package last season in the championship they survived quite comfortably but obviously the championship is a really random one it's it's very much it throws a lot of surprises out at you that you don't really know you can't really predict it Sheffield now could suffer from second season syndrome a little bit and be battling with relegation a bit more often I really hope that isn't the case because I don't want a lot of pressure on Ben Woodburn's shoulder this season not, not that type of pressure anyway and um, there were rumours linking with him to Aston Villa where he could have gone and played under Steve Bruce. I think this would have been a better move for him because I think Aston Villa is a much bigger club. Steve Bruce is a much better manager, you know, more experience going on there. But nevertheless, he's been he, he's been sent out to Sheffield. The cons from going to Aston Villa would have been, I think Jack Grealish is going to stay at Villa now rather than go to Tottenham. And I think that he would have been in competition all the time there. I think he'll get a lot more time than, uh, on the pitch at Sheffield, which is obviously a very good thing for us. But we'll have to wait and see. Like the others, really big season ahead for Ben Woodburn. If he gets the time on the pitch that Liverpool have probably been promised that he will, then I think he'll have a good season, I think he'll create a lot and I think he'll prove to everybody why he's one of the most highly regarded young players at Liverpool.
Moving abroad then into Taiwa Iwaniwi and Alan Rodriguez de Souza, two players who aren't in the same league but I've grouped these two together because again there's a big season for them in regards to getting their work permit in England. That's the, that's the aim for these two. It's very, very simple. They need time on the pitch to contribute towards the points that they need to get their English work permit. But obviously if they get themselves injured over the course of the season that could hamper their chances of getting that work permit for next season. Iwaniwi hadn't played football since March after his last season was ended by injury but he's made two appearances so far. He's yet to score, but he's been relatively impressive in his overall performances. He's at KAA Ghent in Belgium, the same league that he was in last year. Disappointing really that he didn't get a loan to a, a perhaps a more competitive league like Alan did. I'll get onto that in a minute. But Liverpool have obviously decided that he did a very good job there out in Belgium last year and they want to see a bit more of him in that league. Alan, on the other hand, has moved to Eintracht Frankfurt in Germany and this is obviously a substantial step up from last season for Alan. He spent the last season in the Cyprus League with Apollon Limassol. This is a much more competitive league. He'll be playing against teams like Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund. We'll get a lot more of a sense for just how good he is in that central midfielder position when it comes to next May. Both players signed a new long-term deal in July before getting loaned out. So providing they get the work permits, the club seems to have some plans for them. So we're going to be keeping an eye on these ones more closely than I did last season, purely because there's a little bit more riding on both of these loans this season. Back to the UK and we're going to talk about Herbie Kane who's been loaned to Doncaster Rovers. Obviously, I've seen a bit more of this fella because I've watched a lot of the youth football last season those who did as well will know will know more about him he's a central midfielder this is a good move for him he got a lot of time on the pitch for the under 23s last season he got a lot of time on the pitch under Steven Gerrard in the UA for Youth League when they were still in that competition as well um, I'm not convinced he'll ever really make it to Liverpool's first team but he's a good player and I think League One's a suitable challenge for him I would say that he's probably better than League Two standard but the championship he may not have got the minutes up there so I think League One is a nice middle ground Doncaster aren't really expected to challenge for a promotion or expected to be relegated either so again it's a nice middle ground in terms of where they'll be a nice mid-table side he can just play his football without too much pressure on him obviously there's always pressure to perform at a football club there isn't the pressure of oh this team must push for the playoffs this season moving down a division to league two and goalkeeper Shamal George has been loaned out to Tranmere Rovers until January 2019 he is one of the best youth goalkeeper prospects at the club there are whispers that going forward maybe after this season that he could actually become Jurgen Klopp's third choice goalkeeper in the first team setup and I'm wondering if that's why we've only loaded him out until January 2019 because obviously the futures of Loris Karius and Simon Mignolet we've already sold Danny Ward but the future of those two goalkeepers are in doubt maybe if we sell one of those or even both of those two goalkeepers by the end of the January window we'll be looking to bring in players like George and Kelair and Grabara and bring them into the first team set up full time to be the understudies to Allison because they're all very talented goalkeepers and they're all going to do a fine job for this club going forward I think a less popular goalkeeper who has been loaned out to Scotland this summer for the final year of his Liverpool Football Club contract is Adam Bogdan, who's gone to Hibernian up in Scotland. Why is this guy still part of this club? I do not understand. No, I, actually, no, I do understand. I'll tell you why. It's because nobody wants him. He's going to be released from his contract. He's never going to play football again. I can tell you that for free. I didn't initially think that I was going to give you the choice of whether you actually wanted him covered this season. Um, I was going to give you a poll. But then Ross suggested something far more interesting upstairs. He said, fuck it, just let's just take the piss. Let's take the piss with him. He's in the last season of his contract. He's an absolute meme of a goalkeeper. So this year, in the spirit of the Kater countdown, we're going to be counting down the number of days until Bogdan leaves the club and we're going to call it the Adam Bogdan Be Gone countdown. Yeah. So at the time of watching, it is 328 days until the 1st of July 2019, which is the day Adam Bogdak's contract is due to expire and he'll no longer be a Liverpool player. We're going to have a massive party here in the office. We're going to get the champagne out. We're going <laughs> to... I'm joking. I'm joking. So there you have it. There are the nine players who have been loaned out from Liverpool so far this summer. Eight of them are full season loans. One lasts until January. Which player do you think will be most successful and which player will you be keeping the closest eye on over the course of the season? Let us know in the comments below. And we're going to move on to the youth sides. The under-18s have a new manager in Barry Lutus who has been promoted from being the under-16s boss last season. He joined the club in 2013 and has previously worked at clubs like Bolton and Wigan. He's done lots of work with young players over the course of his career, um, aging from around 10 to 14 during his time at those clubs. And since moving to Liverpool, he spent more time coaching the under-10s, the under-12s, the under-13s and the under-16s. In his coaching career, this will actually be the oldest set of players that he's dealt with and coached, which I think will be really interesting. How will 
Willie cope with the challenge of just a little bit older and will he want to move up to the under-23s potentially eventually because they have Neil Critchley still in charge down there and he'll, he'll probably move on eventually and, and will Lutus be looking to, to take over? Upon his appointment, Academy Director Alex Inglethorpe said, we're delighted Barry has decided to take up this position. He already has a strong relationship with those players who will make the step up to our under-18s in the 2018-19 season thanks to his previous role with the under-16s and that's a very good point. It's good that we've got this manager who knows all these players already who's going to make up a step up with a lot of these players. I think that's going to be a key thing. The key in any football team, but particularly in youth football, is just having the bond in the team, having players that know each other very well. And when you've got the same manager that you've worked with for a couple of years, that, that does, that's going to do the team a world of good. Steven Gerrard did very well last season, but I think a lot of that was down to the fact that he was Steven Gerrard and those players really wanted to play for Steven Gerrard. And I think that this might be a bit more of a difficult challenge for, for, for Lutus because he's going to go in and he's going to have to earn that respect and work that little bit harder to get them playing how exactly how he wants them to, I think. The under-18s won four of their five pre-season games under the new boss over the course of the summer and begin their under-18s Premier League campaign on Saturday away at Sunderland. The under-23s, on the other hand, as I said before, they've still got Neil Critchley in, in charge. They were also unbeaten in their pre-season, drawing two and winning one. Their season begins on Friday night away at Brighton and they do have some big games before the end of August. They play Man City and Spurs before the end of the month. And of course, it's been a very good pre-season in terms of an advert for our academy. There's been a lot of young players who've made the step up to play for the first team in America and in the in the domestic away friendlies in July while the World Cup was on. Um, you know, players like Curtis Jones, the goalkeepers Calaire and Grabara. Nat Phillips is obviously centre-back. He's going to be playing, I think, a few times for the, for the first team this season. In terms of an advert for our academy and the opportunities that you will get at this club if you work hard, you put your mind to it. We've had a very good pre-season for that and I think a lot of young players will be looking at Liverpool, you know, even at the early ages of 9 and 10 when they're getting the offers from the scouts after after a Sunday league game you know the really talented players of that age will have a few academies to pick from do they want to go and play for Man United or Chelsea you definitely don't want to go and play for Man United at the moment you definitely want to come and play for Liverpool because they're going to give you opportunities in the first team and they're going to give you opportunities to play under Jurgen Klopp and I think it's been a really good summer for showcasing the talent that we've been bringing through our academy for all these years and that is it ladies and gentlemen that's been the first episode of this season development watch thanks very much for watching as always subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave me a comment down below about which players are exciting you from the youth size at the moment, which players do you think are going to impress out on loan, what do you make of the future of some of these players, let us know all that down in the comments. Follow me on Twitter at bkelly776 also and I will see you next week after the first round of Premier League fixtures and after another round of low knee games and after the start of the youth seasons for more Development Watch. I've been Ben Kelly, goodbye.